Now let us continue with some not so good news. 42 years after the Soviet liturgy was translated into Malayalam, we are still struggling to transfer the Aramaic way of thinking into the vernacular, to transfer ideas and concepts that originated in the cultural context of a particular people. Therefore, it is time to develop deep into the roots of the problem of transferring a way of thinking as opposed to translating words from one language to another, from one cultural setting to another. Let us examine a few words, a few words in the prayer vocabulary of the Sulaiman of our Catholics. The prayer vocabulary is the common man's encyclopedia of theology. What I am trying to do for the next few minutes is to show how we have failed to transfer the Aramaic way of thinking into the vernacular liturgy by highlighting certain straight words and expressions that we have disregarded during the process of translating the liturgy. I'm going to take, an exa take examples from the Malayalam and English versions of our Kurbana. I'm not familiar with the versions in the other languages. I would like to argue in favor of adopting those words back and terms into the vernacular. You are completely free to disagree with me. Such disagreements can only be beneficial for the ongoing discourse on our heritage. So please bear with me. In every language, there are words that define themselves by their sounds. The sound of the word itself is its meaning. Such words emerge out of the communal wisdom of the speakers of a language. Usually, these words are understood in exactly the same way by the speakers of the same language across the board. The most familiar example from India is the Sanskrit term Shanti. Shanti. The very utterance of the word creates the effect and it is understood by the listener instantly. Interpretations are unnecessary. One such example from the Aramaic lexicon is the word ruh, which literally means breath. The utterance of this word requires a special use of air and energy that explicates the meaning. Ruh is pre-language, even pre-word. It is pre-om. Ruth is the raw material with which words and meanings are constructed. In the beginning was the Ruch. The Ruch was with God and Ruch was God. Don't blame me, I just made it up. Interestingly, our Tamil speaking forefathers in Kerala adopted the word Ruch into their prayer vocabulary. Even after Sri's literacy declined considerably, they retained this word. Our parents' generation said the minor doxology as Bhavaikim Putranam Ruha Nikulichaikim Sriyayikate. Praise to the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Ruha. They did not try to translate Ruha into Tamil. In the 1960s, however, we translated the word Ruh into Atma, meaning soul, that which sustains life, or Arubi, that which is formless. Thus, currently, we say the minor doxology as Pidavanam Putranam Parishitharmanam Sri. Both words, Atma and Adubi, are insufficient to communicate the original sense of the word, Ruha. An example from the lyrics of a Malayalam movie song by a famous lyricist and poet might support the argument. Sri Vaila Ramavarma wrote a Christian prayer song for the film, Magane Nanakuendi. The song starts with a minor doxology. Sri Vaila, a Hindu, was well versed in the Christian folklore of Kerala. His more famous colleague, Sri Yashadas, the playback, the, the playback singer, is a Catholic. The film was released in 1971, nine years after the Sudan of our church translated the liturgy into Malayalam. The minor doxology by that time was already on the lips of every Catholic in Kerala as Pidavaran Mudraman Vachitakmavan Sri. Instead of following the popular version, Sri Vailar decided to retain the Aramaic word Ruha. Both words Parishitharmava and Parishitharubi would have been a perfect fit to the melody. Bhavaikim Putrayanam Parishitharmavanam would have been fine. Parishitharubi would have been fine. While our new, however, that both Atmava and Arubi 
had accumulated different connotations and might detract the listeners from the sense of the original Aramaic word Ruha. He knew that words carried not only particular meanings but also collective memories of the speakers of the language. In retrospect, one can really appreciate the wisdom of Sri Vaila Ramavarma. 